Hello, my YouTube friend. This is part six of my mega epic $300,000 Funko Pop unhaul. That's right. I am sorting through my collection, making the tough decisions. And I'm going to try to sell about 6,000 out of my 9,000 Funko Pops. Woo, this is a big, long adventure. I'm actually having a lot of fun going through my collection, revisiting things, seeing the pops I truly love. And then the ones I'm like, yeah, you know what? I can get rid of them. And uh, I just think I'm having a lot of fun with you guys. I really appreciate all the comments and the thumbs up you guys are giving me. Continue to do that because it's really helping the algorithm promote my videos. That makes me super happy. And I want to keep making these videos for you guys. Okay. So today, uh, it's getting a little bit hard to function in here because I'm pulling stuff down and the floor is getting kind of full and it's getting really hard to function. And uh, But I want to keep going, keep making these videos and keep sorting the collection and just make a lot of room in the office. So I think today we have to play a lot of Hoarder Tetris. <laughs> That's where you have to move a lot of boxes around in a really cramped space trying to make room to function. Let me kind of show you what's going on in the office and make a game plan for today. Okay, so we are, let's see, the top here, I have room where I pulled boxes down. So I need to kind of move some stuff from over here. I have all these, actually, let me move, oh, walk over here. Ugh. It's so crowded. The, the floor is so cluttered, so it's kind of hard to work over here. So we have three boxes here that are just toys, I think. That's mostly Funko Pops. That giant tower, that's eight tall, I believe. So today's job, I want, want to kind of move that, kind of move that. I want to stack some of the stuff up here to the ceiling just so that two or three of these rows of comics are free. I'm going to move those comic rows over to this side with more comic books because I figure if I take that, I move it over, open up a channel here, we can start digging in. And if I clear out the top there, I can move a lot of the rest of these boxes up there. So I think that's the game plan. All right, before we start shuffling stuff around, I kind of want to go through this box of toys. It's nothing super special, but I just kind of wanted to talk about toy collecting for a few minutes. Okay, so let's look at this random bin. This is just a random bin of other toys. I collect a lot of toys besides just Funko Pops just because I really enjoy toys. I think toys are a great thing to collect. Let me take the cover off here. I love collecting toys. I think they're a fun thing to collect. And I think it's a safe, great place to store your money. I invest in toys. I collect a lot of fashion dolls. Now, some people might think that's silly, uh, but I prefer just for investment. I mean, I think they're really fun. Rainbow High is a really cute line of dolls. I think they're nicely made. Very quality toy. Uh, most of these I buy on sale for like 17, 18 bucks, or I use reward points to get them for free. And the reason why, I mean, I like collecting them just because they're fun, but I also think fashion dolls are a great place to stick your money. Now, the thing with toys like this is it's always a toy. It will always be a cute, pretty doll that a kid will want to buy. So if regular retail on these are $30 and the prices just keep going up because of inflation, this will go up in value just in the sense that if a new doll is $40, you can sell an old doll for $40 because it competes with the new dolls. So it will match inflation. So you, with toys, you have a very low chance of actually losing money on toys, especially because I buy them on sale. So I immediately, as soon as I buy it, it's already a great price. So in 10 years, when the girls that are buying these right now are like go from 8 to 10 to 18 to 20, some of them might want to start collecting these and will start paying money for them. Now, I do collect boy toys as well, or toys usually geared towards a male audience. Although I tend to collect ones that are kind of aimed towards adult audiences. As in, I grew up with G.I. Joe, so I absolutely love G.I. Joe. Uh, so I buy these just because I love them. Again, I probably bought these on sale or someone traded them to me in the shop or I used my reward points. So I probably, you know, 20, 25 is retail on this. I probably got it for 15 or 10. This, I'm not as confident in the long-term value, as in I don't think this will go up much in value, whereas that, I'm sure, will go up in value. Now, the reason why I uh, rather buy that than this is most adult male collectors, they buy stuff like this and they leave it in the box. Keep it mint because they think mint will be worth the most. So they don't open them up as often. Now, some collectors do open them up and I'm not... If you're a person who likes to open up and play with them, I think you're getting way more value out of your toys because you're actually enjoying them, right? You're spending money, but you're getting value out of them and whatever it's worth in the future open doesn't really matter because your value is actually taking out, displaying it, taking pictures of it, doing Instagram, etc. 
but most male adult collectors keep their stuff mint in box. I would say like 98%. 2% will go, kids aren't buying stuff like this. And I say anything aimed towards an adult collector audience will never really gain nostalgia value. So this won't go up much in value. Whereas, you know, there are adult collectors that are buying Rainbow High right now and, uh, you know, enjoying it, but a lot of kids are buying this. So what happens is most female adult collectors or most kids open that up to display. She's going to get opened up. She's going to put on display. So the vast majority of these are going to get opened. So there won't be a lot of these mint in the box in 10 to 20 years. So for me, this is a great long-term investment. I pay 17 now. I bet she'll be one to two hundred dollars in 10 to 15 years so i love collecting fashion dolls i own thousands i buy them all the time and the ones i bought 10 years ago a lot of those are worth 10 times what i paid or more and these i got on sale i believe for 17 dollars and uh i mean they're just so cute they're just a quality doll they're made well i mean sometimes the hair is not made as well but what you're getting is a quality toy that in 10, 20 years, whoever grew up with these, they're going to want them again, and they're going to be willing to pay money because they're going to be hard to find because most of them are getting opened. And then uh, sometimes I just keep stuff like this. These are mini baseball cards. Uh, I love just mini things, and I like the idea of creating a display for them. I just never had time, so I do collect stuff like this. I'm hoping one day I have space to actually do like a little fun Instagram photos and stuff, making displays. But that's not the kind of thing that will have value. I love the G.I. Joe stuff. So these, whenever I have a chance to pick them up, like super cheap, I'm going to pick them up. I actually, I think all of these were traded into my shop. So I probably paid like $10 a piece on those. Uh, this I bought with credit card rewards. Just a really cute mini mouse doll that was like $8. I'm sure this will be like $40, $50 bucks in 10 years. So that's a, you know, I think that's a good investment. And I've been, people have been telling me as I sell my, or not people, like a couple people have been telling me as I sell my Funko Pops, oh, that's good. I should put it into gold and silver. Gold and silver is a store of value, but it's not something that gains value, right? It only gains value through inflation and fear, but it doesn't really gain value because it's not creating anything. Whereas something like this, it gains value because of nostalgia. People want it again, and it gets scarcer and scarcer every day. There's less and less of these. People open them up. They enjoy them. Uh, this run, I think the earlier, this is series two. I think these are soon to be out of print. They'll be out of print within a year or two, and then they just won't be anymore. And then uh, what's the last thing I have in here? I just, oh, I just, it's a Grogu backpack. Uh, these lounge fly bags, I think are super cute. Again, this is the kind of thing that I think in 10 years, people that grew up with the Mandalorian might pay a little bit for. I don't know on that. I might end up selling this. Just, I don't know how well bags have long-term. I just thought it was really cute. So I decided to keep it. But like I said, I love investing in stuff like this because the majority of everything I bought over the years, after five or ten years, after it goes out of print, the price is really skyrocket on this kind of stuff. Whereas this kind of stuff uh, kind of has like a ceiling, but I still collect it because I love it. This is, for the love of it, this is, I do love these too, but also I think great investments. So I'll actually buy a lot more of these than I will the G.I. Joe stuff. G.I. Joe stuff, I just kind of wait until it's a great price. I'm also in the business of pop culture and that kind of stuff. So I'd rather put my money into plastic and paper that's pop culture related because I'm more confident in that than putting my money into like the stock market or into precious metals. I do like precious metals. I actually do have some coins, not a lot, but a few here and there that I've had for a long time. Uh, but with toys, I just, I, like I said, I feel like there's very little risk because there will always be a toy. So even if they don't go up in value nostalgically, someone's still going to want to buy it just as a toy to enjoy. So, and if a new toy is 40 bucks, they're going to match. They're going to be 40 bucks because you can't get other toys unless you get used toys or you find an old toy that's cheaper or someone's willing to sell cheaper. But for the most part, toys kind of raise in value, at least with inflation. So the ones that don't go up in value, you still can kind of sell around wherever the current toy prices are. And in a lot of cases, they do gain nostalgic value and they just gain a lot of value. If you guys like me just going through a random box of toys like that as I'm showing the office, I could probably add a box every video. So if you like it, let me know in the comments below. Okay, let's start doing uh, some Tetris. Okay, I think I just have to move this box and this row is emptied out. If you're curious of some of those older toys I have, I have two to five of every Monster High doll made from 2010 to 2016. Look on eBay, look those up, see what some of those go for. I think I have seven of the Ghoulia Superhero Comic-Con exclusive. Look how much that goes for. 
and I paid $25 each on those. Okay, while I'm up on the table digging through here, I thought I would just give you a quick high part of the office tour. <laughs> so in that corner, we have boxes. That corner, boxes, boxes, boxes. We have a lot of boxes to dig through. These boxes, these boxes. I'm hoping to get rid of a whole bunch of these boxes. Uh, I'm up high, so each of these towers are eight boxes tall. If you could see here, that's like a full tower right there. And then uh, these three boxes, I think, are non-pops. So those I'm going to move today. Uh, that whole row there, I want to you know, get those out and just fill that space up with the comic books just so that they're kind of to the side and easier for me to sort through i can basically just grab a box and sort it whereas right now it's well i can sort them here but i figure if i'm burying stuff i don't want to bury it i kind of just want to have it all accessible i do have a lot of loose toys if you look over here uh see these poles actually these hold my lights and camera gear it's just floor the ceiling poles so it's the best way i can hold stuff while i'm in here i have a lot of loose toys kind of on the shelf there though those I think I want to put away and clear out those boxes too for comics. Comics, comics, comics. This room is going to be a lot more comic focused, I think. Whereas I also do want to set up one wall for doing pop videos. Oh yeah, but this whole task is kind of overwhelming. I woke up today, I was going to go to the Queen's Comic Party and I realized how exhausted I was from doing it for five days straight. This is day six and I'm starting to really feel it. But... I'm just charged up by how well the videos are doing. It's exciting to me. The channel itself is the thing that means the most to me. You know, I love having the collection, but having a successful channel that lets me do bigger, more awesome things, that's even more exciting for me. So I can't wait to see the channel really grow and just keep doing videos. All right, let me grab one box to go through. So I'm not just talking to you, but we get through some pops today. Man, last year I bought so many pops. This is box number one, but I was going... Uh, a b c d e f three through c then i did double a through double z then i did triple a to triple z and then i did quadruple a to quadruple z so that's a hundred boxes and then i started going to numbers i must have added like three thousand four thousand pops to my collection last year <laughs> it was crazy okay let's dig to this box this should be pretty easy to sort it's another unhaul mystery box because i don't know what's in the box i'm just assuming it'll be new-ish stuff with maybe a couple of rare ones we shall see uh okay um hmm i don't think i'm seeing anything that i need like basketball players i can sell those because i'm not really attached yeah so that was me just keeping everything oh okay i do see one i absolutely love uh bad boys i can sell that uh this one's a keeper because i love this set the around the world set with the little pins these are wonderful that one's a keeper uh hobbs and shaw that can go fast and furious uh wrecker from the bad batch that can go uh, i am keeping all the sodas that i have i think most of the ones i have are chases oh pocahontas is really cute i'm keeping her i do like my princesses uh biff tannin can go he's one of the newer back to the future ones uh, Venomized Groot Glow in the Dark version. You can go uh, more basketball. All the basketball stuff can go. All right, this is turning out to be pretty easy. Oh, War of the Planets, Ape, Bad Apes. Uh, I was going to sell Caesar, but I think I'm going to keep him. I forgot how hard it was to get these. So I think that's just going to be a pain in the butt to try to get again. Uh, Amazon, Kevin Smith. I think I can sell him. I do like Kevin Smith, but I'm pretty sure he can go. Uh, Diamond, Bugs, Bunny, and Fruit Hat. That one can go. Uh, left Eye from TLC. She can go. Uh, okay, some more sodas. So those are all keepers. A little gruesome. I love that one. Uh, Woodsy Owl's a keeper. Uh, the Mandalorian. No Stripes. That can go. Or the Death Watch Mandalorian. Okay, is this... This is the rare version. No, this is just the silver version. I can let go of that one. Uh, Bloodsport, that one's really cool, but I can sell him. Uh, more, wow, I was keeping so many basketball ones last year. I do like the basketball ones, though. I think they look cool. Uh, Ronald Flew can go. Kakil from The Mandalorian, he can go. I do love The Mandalorian, but uh, Falcon can go. Those are all easily replaceable, I think. Thanos on Throne, the international version. He can go. I do love that one. 
uh, Black Widow Soda, keeping that one. And then the... Okay, so my son does love Avatar. And so I think I'm going to keep all the Avatar. Anything that I think are his childhood favorites, I'm keeping. Like, he likes Pokemon, but he only likes specific Pokemon. So I don't feel the need to keep all those. But I feel like the Avatar set I want to keep. Okay, let's see what this was. So that's about a 66%... I'm selling out that box. That was a successful sort. I'm really happy with the results of that box. You know, in the past, anytime I've done a big office sort and cleanup, I just stopped making videos for a month. If you ever notice me take like a month break, it's usually because I'm dealing with sorting the office and trying to make room again to film. And it's something I was getting to a point where I was doing every like four months. And uh, so I think this is the first time I'm bringing you guys along for the ride and I'm actually kind of enjoying it. It's kind of fun to show you. It's not all fun and games. But sometimes it's a lot of work to take care of your collection. So uh, I'm actually having fun sharing this process as well. And it's kind of nice to actually let go of some stuff just to gain some room. Okay, I got to move these two stacks of comics right there just so that we have room here so we can start digging into the piles over the next week or so. <clears throat> Oh, I got two 10-inch props I had to pull down. Uh, this one, pretty sure I'm keeping this because the thing is one of my all-time favorite characters. So I have to keep a thing. But I feel like I can let go of Mickey Mouse. Uh, I have a feeling I can get him again if I really want him. I do kind of like, you know, I love, hate these big ones. They're just so much fun, but they take up so much room. Yeah, I'm just moving these. <clears throat> One cool thing about having so much stuff like I do that I just where I just kind of collect as much as I think has the potential to go up in value is that I always have a source of stuff to sell in my shop. So I'm almost never out of stuff. I always have way more stuff to sell than I ever need in the shop. So that's like a good thing. It's whenever I feel like I need to cut back spending, I still can restock the shop by selling things from the collection, which is actually something I do with comic books a lot because I don't sort them as soon as I get them. I kind of just buy them. And then once or twice a year, I do a big sort and I pull out like a big section of just X-Men stuff or just Spider-Man stuff and uh, just pull them out and sell a box or two a month. That's kind of how I do it. Mm. Moving comic boxes is a lot of work. Builds upper body strength. <laughs> I also feel like an old man. I'm doing the old man grunt as I pick up each one. <laughs> okay, so I cleared out two rows. Actually, no, we're fully three rows of comics pulled out to the side here. So now it's kind of crowded over here, but I have a lot of room over here now to work. So I should be able to start knocking out these boxes a ton every day. Maybe even be able to do a couple of videos in a day. And uh, by next weekend, Hopefully a big chunk of this is done. Three boxes a day over the next seven days, 21 boxes. That's gonna knock out a big area over here. Okay, so yeah, I got a little alcove here. Of This is all pop boxes. Uh, looks like all 2021 boxes. All 21, oh, old box. This one's gonna be a hard one. I think I have one Outlander pop. I know that's super in demand. That I'm keeping though, because my wife loves that series. Uh, this looks like all kind of rare stuff. This might be one of those boxes where I look at it and I only want to sell like a third of it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that box is just... These older boxes, those are the ones that are going to be the hardest because the older ones are the ones that have all the rarer stuff. Whereas the 2021 boxes, like this whole row, I'll probably be able to get rid of two thirds of those. No problem. Easy. Easy. Hard. And uh, back here, Hard. 2021, there's the triple letter ones, L, 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 L. 2021, wow, there's a lot in here. Uh, and then up there is still older ones, so that's going to be hard. This stack, 2021, this triple letter, uh, 2021, okay, yeah. We got a lot of sorting and a lot of digging to do over the next few months. Uh, let's go through another box, see if I can sort through it pretty easily. All right, this is another 2021 box, so this one should be relatively easy to sort through. Okay, let's do it. Okay, let's see what's in here. 
Let's, uh, you know, this gets kind of nervous and exciting at the same time because it is a mystery box because I don't know what's in any of these boxes. I haven't looked at them in forever. So let's see what we got. Uh, hmm. There's definitely some keepers, definitely a few I can sell. Right, let's see what we got. Oh, Fonzie from Happy Days. I can sell him. Okay with that. Danger Mouse. Okay with that. Oh, I do like Willie Nelson, but he can go. That's cool. Willie Nelson. I do like the music ones. Uh, oh, I kind of... Uh, oh, Garrett Cole. Mm, Yankees just lost. I can sell him. <laughs> oh, my Yankees. Uh, Martian Manhunter. He's really cool, but I can sell him. The Bumblebee International sticker. I could sell him. I do love my Transformers, but I think he's relatively cheap. Uh, Peace of Mind Eddie from Iron Man. He can go. The Merman from the Funko Shop. He can go. I do love He-Man stuff, but they're just, they don't really have value, and I'm not afraid of them going up in value. Dark Side Ray. She's kind of cool looking. Uh, I think I'm just going to keep her because I think she's really neat looking. Uh, Def Leopard, he can go. Uh, another UFC fighter, he can go. Uh, I don't really like the art series at all, so he can easily go. I don't even know if I'm rebuilding collection if I want him. Uh, okay, I see. Oh, this is the Terror Claws Skeletor, he can go. Uh, it kind of hurts my heart a little bit to sell these, but the thing is, Master of the Universe is aimed towards an adult audience that's like 45, 50 years old, so. Old guys aren't buying them as much, so they're not really going up in value. Uh, Nebula with the three cards, she can go. Even though I love Nebula. Uh, Dwight with the face mask, he can go. Okay, this is pretty good. I'm actually, what, one keeper so far? Uh, Sharon Carter, she can go. Uh, Shiro, absolutely love Shiro. She's got to stay. She's a keeper. Big Shiro fan. Uh, Storm. Oh, she's really cool. I think I have to keep that one. Phil Collin from Def Leppard. He can go. Not really a Def Leppard fan. Uh, Fox. I do really like that one, but he can go. He's pretty cool. Okay. So far, so good. Uh, Jackie Kennedy. I didn't even know I had that one. She can go. Uh, the Witch Marge. I do like the Treehouse of Horror, but I feel like those aren't really going up in value. So I'm not really worried about that. Uh, USA Homer. I can sell him. The Grizzlor, I can sell him. He's also the earlier versions of these, or the original Master Universe ones, are really low print, but these ones are higher print. Uh, King Cold, he can go. Uh, Voldemort, oh, he is dope. I think I have to keep that one just because he's so cool. Uh, Pride Deadpool, he can go. The Penguin Snowman, he's pretty cool, but he can go. Lonzo Ball, he can go. Dark Aqua, oh, she is really cool looking. I think I'm keeping her. I do like my female characters, especially when they have a really fun design. Whereas if they're kind of just kind of boring like that, I'm not as excited about that. Oh, Marge is awesome. Okay, but yeah, I can, I gotta stop. I'll keep, like every once in a while I'm pulling one back. There's probably about three or four I end up keeping that I said I was gonna sell. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really hard process. The thing is, though, a lot of the stuff I just kept from Opportunity because, you know, I buy big collections, so I would just keep a lot. So it wasn't like I made the decision of going to the store and picking out the ones I really wanted and then, you know, just getting ones I really enjoy, so it's a little bit harder. I was just keeping everything, right? So I think it's a little bit easier for me to part with stuff like this because this was a lot less curated. This is more just like grab one of everything. Where, I mean, some of this, like, he, I would have picked up just because he's cool. But I don't think I would ever pick up a UFC fighter. But this one I probably would have picked up. So, sword curated. All right, one, two, three, four, five. Only five out of that box. Five out of 60. That's 85% uh, sell-through rate. That is a really good ratio. Really good. That will make up for a couple of the older boxes that I might keep more than half. I wanted to revisit my scratchy, messy handwriting from yesterday where I was talking about the actual extra cost of selling other than selling in my store. Uh, one thing I didn't mention was that 
you know, you have to think about the cost of labor. In New York City, minimum wage is $15 an hour. If I hire someone at minimum wage, I have to pay an additional 2 or $3 an hour for uh, unemployment taxes, uh, workings comp, the extra Medicare taxes and all that kind of stuff. So it costs me about $18 an hour. So for the 100 pop example, it would take me about 12 hours extra listing. So 12 times 18 was at $216. So it would cost me $2.16 in labor cost to sell on eBay or Macari. That's a huge price, you know, huge part of the pop. And let's say those pops average at $20 a piece, that's 10% in labor costs. Then I also have to give 10, 12, 13% or so, maybe 15% for uh, processing fees and eBay fees or Macari fees. So on a $20 pop, that's another $3 in costs. So I'm paying $2 labor costs, $3 in fees, and then maybe another dollar for our shipping box and supplies. So three, four, five, six dollars on a $20. So let's say, uh, here, let's say I have a $20 pop. I pay someone, I'll buy it from them for $10, right? If I sell it in the store, I'm going to sell it for $20.99 because I'm going to put a protector on it. The protector costs me 50 to 60 cents. I'll mark it up a little bit so i make another 40 cents so i'll make ten dollars and 45 cents let's say in the shop selling that pop if i sell it on ebay i don't get that extra 99 cent profit it cost me three four five six dollars so i'm going to get uh 14 no 13 84 so i only make three dollars and 84 cents so selling on ebay macquarie Versus the store, I make $10.45 in the store. I make $3.84 online. I make almost nothing. So whenever people tell me I would sell so much more online, I would actually have to sell three times as much stuff to make the same profit level. That's another reason why I don't sell on the websites that often. I don't need to. I sell a lot in the shop and that's a really high expense. On top of that, if I do it where I do direct sales, where there's no fees or anything, it takes me three times. So the labor cost is going to be four or five dollars in labor cost per twenty dollars. So it's still a very high cost, even though it doesn't cost me any fees, it still costs me a labor cost. So I just want to explain that a little bit that it's not just that I don't want to sell to you guys on Macari or list or it's just that the cost for me to do it is so high that it makes it so it's not even worth me trying, if that makes sense. I love selling to people in the shop. I love meeting people. And eventually maybe I'll find a way to start selling at some conventions around the country so I can meet more of you guys in person. Because if I did sell at conventions, there is an added cost of the convention cost, the cost to hire someone to help me at the convention and to drive. I don't drive, so I'd have to hire someone, uh, the cost of renting a van. So that would be really expensive. But if I sold at conventions, I should be able to cover a lot of that cost by actually doing fun videos. And so, Selling at a convention would actually let me also buy a lot more cool stuff that I can maybe sell and make a little bit more profit on. And there'd be all kinds of added bonuses of actually selling at conventions that I wouldn't get if I sell online. So if I sell at the conventions, I'd get all those added bonus and I can make a lot more cool videos. And that's at the end of the day, I want to make cool videos. If let's say I spend five to eight hundred dollars to do a convention and I make five to eight hundred dollars profit just and I break even. To me, it was worth it just because then I could do some really cool videos by going to the convention. All right, let's go through our third box of the day. All right, another 2021 box. So this one, I think, will be really easy to pull out most of it. Okay, you ready? <laughs> this is the moment of truth, excitement. It's kind of scary, kind of fun. I, I, this is fun. Every time I get a little, like, excitement jolt. Let's see what we got. Uh, I think most of this can go. I don't see anything that's a must-own for me. Uh, although, I kind of think I want to keep all the 6-inch pops because I love this size. And this Baymax is really awesome. He's holding the cute kitty. I forgot I had that one. Man, I must have bought this one and put it away in like four seconds and don't remember it at all. Okay, we got the Saint Seiya Pops. Oh, man, that one's dope, though. It's so, the gold in it. I'm keeping that one. That one's just too cool looking. Uh, this one I think I can sell, though. This one's kind of cool, though. Oh, I like the color, too. No, I'm going to keep that one, too. That one's too cool. <laughs> Never mind. I'm keeping them all. Uh... Assassin's Creed uh, Ivor, I guess that's how you say his name. He looks cool, but that one can go. Uh, Bullseye Target Con, he can go. Uh, LeBron James, Amazon exclusive, he can go. 
the clear master chief oh i do love translucent pops but he can go i think that one's common enough that i'll be able to get him again honestly most of these i could probably get again uh okay i think i can only let that one go that one's not as cool to me uh more mba ones wow i was keeping a lot of mba ones last year i guess i just made the decision last year i'd keep mba ones uh art batman that one can sell oh this one i'm keeping because this one's kind of hard to get so the Voltez 5, it's a, um, uh, I forget which con exclusive, but it's from, I uh, think it's from the Philippines. You guys can correct me. I forget. Uh, Macho Man. Diamond Macho. He's cool, but I guess I'm not really into wrestling. I guess I was just keeping very selective wrestling ones. Glow in the Dark, Mecha Godzilla. One of my all-time favorite characters, but I'm not in love with the pop, so I can sell that one. Uh, another Macho Man. I'll sell him. My wrestling fans will be happy. Oh, the deep. I can sell him. He can go. Uh, Mark Hamill. Rare Mark Hamill. Keeper. Keeper on the rare ones. Especially cool ones like that. Uh, Godspeed can go. Uh, Black Sabbath cover. I love this one. But that one can go. I'm, I have a love-hate relationship. I kind of love them. I kind of hate that the it's in the pop box. So, like, you got to take it out to really enjoy the album. So, I kind of wish they weren't in the box. Although, I guess you could slide it out. But then it's not complete anymore. So, I wish it was just the album cover, not with the box art around it. And I wish it actually had a record. And, you know, they could charge $15 more and have an actual... If it was the actual record inside in this box with a pop, that would have been the coolest collectible ever. This is kind of just a... Uh, bad attempt at it and then we have the back and black acdc i don't even remember getting these wow <laughs> i must have got those and put them away like instantly so those can go uh oh this one's a keeper though i love the pop rides and uh the stitch ride where he's in the ship is amazing uh i really love stitch and i'm already deciding to sell some of my stitches which kind of bums me out a little bit because i love stitch a ton but this is a keeper just because the ride is so cool looking. Okay, keeper. Okay, that one wasn't as good of a result. Looks like only uh, looks like I'm only parting with about 55%, maybe, maybe close to 60% of the box just by volume. So close, but yeah, not quite there. But I guess the first two boxes is pretty good on. So I guess it's successful enough for the day. Okay, little added bonus are four keepers that I just never got logged in. So these were just on my shelf. So we have the Hello Kitty mashup ones with My Hero. I love these. These are adorable. So these are two keepers. Uh, Elwood Cake. This is one that took me forever to get. Love that one. Definitely a grail piece. The All Might Deku double set. Awesome double set. Love that. So those are all keepers. And I have one more box of keepers that I want to pull out just so that I can get them put away. I have all kinds of little stashes of clutter like this all over the office that I need to process just to clean up. Okay, and then I have one more box here. I'm pretty sure these are all keepers because these are ones that uh, I got more recent that I definitely knew I wanted. They were on my want list or just ones that I thought were amazing. So Diablo, love that game. So awesome, awesome pop. The Blue Mercy, which I absolutely love. I love the way she looks. I'm a sucker for blue pops. Uh, the Zenyatta from Overwatch. This one looks amazing. The This is a Grail. Ridgel Hawkman. The Gemini exclusive metallic one. Limited to 240 pieces. Man, that's amazing. Really awesome Grail. Uh, Mr. Bean Error. Love that one. That's a keeper. I love my Error pops. Uh, Arthas from World of Warcraft. That's a keeper. And then uh, the Killer Clown from the, I guess, the box. That one's super cool, too. I'm keeping that one. So that those are all keepers. I just wanted to show you guys again because I'm going to put them away after this. As we go through the series, I just I really want to document all the ones I'm keeping so you guys kind of know what's in my collection because when I'm done, I still want to have a really awesome collection. Uh, let me just show you the corner. We made a lot of progress today. It's uh, kind of hard to get over here because I have a table in the way, but we cleared out most of the stack now. I have three more boxes. That's, I guess, tomorrow's video. Uh, two boxes of toys. Again, if you guys want me to do an additional toy box each video, I think I'm happy to share with that with you guys. And then we have this wall to dig through. And we're making our way. I do have a lot of clutter here now, though. So this is full. But when I'm done here and I'm done going through those boxes up there, I'm hoping to fit a lot of the comic boxes up here. 
Uh, this shelf here is like 20 boxes full of my Batman comic collection. You know, guys, I still have a lot of my robots. If people still want to buy them, I am still selling them for $35 shipped for the silver or the glow-in-the-dark ones. I just, I don't really know how to sell them. I have to bring them to conventions, I think. I'm not sure if we can take a sneak peek of how deep it goes. Uh, I can't really see. But I believe these boxes go back another three boxes, I believe. So that's another like six feet that way we got to go by the end of the series. <laughs> that's why I say this is part six, but we're probably going to end up doing a hundred part series, which would be fun. I also over there, I have a whole room of stuff. I mean, this is like a hoarder situation, but as I'm showing you what's in these boxes, you can see it's not junk. It's stuff of value and stuff gaining value, but it's a lot of it. But over there is pretty much my 1998 to 2011 collection of stuff. I put it away right before my son was born just so that he wouldn't mess with it as a baby. And uh, I have a lot of awesome retro toys. That might be a whole other series where we dig through that whole. Once I get this all cleared out, I might do a month series just digging through that room. I think that'll be a lot of fun. If you guys want to see my retro toy haul series, let me know in the comments below. Keep leaving me in the comments and keep leaving me the thumbs up because it's really helping the algorithm promote these videos. We got a lot done today. Today was a ton of fun. I'm going to put another mega epic Funko Pop video right there. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.